Hey, what's up? I've got some more lore content for you guys. With the Xbox Game Pass unlocking the full Foundations collection for players, I wanted to share three easy to play decks that utilize only the Foundation set. If you're an Xbox Game Pass member, or a new player that wants to get into the game while using the base set, then this video is for you. I made three easy to play decks that have some of the most fan favorite champions in them. One deck is fast and aggressive, one deck is slow and controlled, and the third deck is somewhere in the middle, so no matter what your playstyle is, there should be a deck for you. Each of the deck codes will be in the description below, along with the Mobilytics links. Before I get into the decks, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay, and also consider visiting my Patreon for additional benefits. With that, I hope you enjoy these deck rundowns. Alright, for the first deck I have for you, this is the fast and aggressive Elusive deck. Elusive is a very important keyword to learn, because it's a very strong keyword. Elusive says, this unit can only be blocked by an elusive unit, so the opponent has to be playing elusives to actually block your units when they attack. So this can be really annoying because you can poke a little bit of damage here and there, and then all of a sudden just have lethal on board and your opponent cannot actually block anything. They have to use spells, or they have to do something to prevent your elusives from actually hitting them. So it can be very one-sided when you get these units developed and start swinging with them. The entire theme of the deck is to set them up, protect them with HP buffs like Elixir of Iron so they don't die to removal, things that deal 1 or 2 damage to your units, so they can live and then also do combat, right? So they can swing into the opponent's face and keep hitting direct damage until you find lethal. So we have Elixir of Iron to protect, we have Navori Blade Scout who is only elusive the turn he's summoned, so you want to make sure you use him on the attack turn if you want to push damage. Next we have Omen Hawk. When I'm summoned, grant the top two allies in your deck plus one plus one. This is obviously very good if you lead with Omenhawk on one. This can hit your elusive units like your turn two, maybe your champion on turn three, and then you can kind of snowball the game and it gets out of control very quickly. Next we have Greenglade Duo. Speaking of snowball, this is a very, very strong snowball-y card. You can even consider this one of your win conditions, one of the cards that you play around to win the game as consistently and as fast as possible. When you summon an ally, give me 1-0 this round. So if she's already developed and you spam a bunch of allies, you can get Greenglade Duo up to like, you know, 6 or 7 attack, and that's kind of crazy considering there's only 20 HP in this game. Next we have Keeper of Masks. When I'm summoned, give other allies plus one plus zero. So this is obviously a really good card if you're already set up. You have three or four elusives and then you play Keeper of Masks, giving you a big plus four or plus five for the turn. Very good for very big attack swings. Next we have Navori Conspirator, who is elusive. To play me, recall an ally, so you're going to want to recall your Omenhawk, so you can resummon Omenhawk and get the effect again, which is really scary. You can hit your Navori Blade Scout, so you can play him later with Elusive again, and you can kind of see the combo potential with him. Very scary card, especially when he's uh, getting out of control. Next we have Triple Twin Disciplines. This is a plus 2 attack boost or a plus 3 HP, depending on choice. Very good, very flexible card, pretty much a must run in Ionia. Next we have Triple Shadow Assassin, which is a elusive card, and also a summon draw one. So this is also really good at, you know, if you dump your hand, you can play her and refill your hand a little bit. Super good to keep the resources going. Next we have our one and only champion from Foundations. This is Zed. Zed is a fan favorite champion in League of Legends. He's a playmaker. He's super cool. They translated him pretty well into Legends or in Terra. He does a lot of the same stuff. He attacks, which summons a living shadow. If him or his shadow hit the opponent's nexus twice, then he levels up and becomes even more annoying, very strong, he has quick attack, so he's really hard to block, and he's just overall a really really good pressure tool on top of the other elusive threats that you're sending into the opponent. Next we have 2 Deny, which is a really cheeky defensive spell that Ionia has access to, one of the best cards in the game. You can just stop opponent's removal, you can stop their big win conditions if they're playing like uh, a 10 cost card that does this crazy strong effect, you can just say, nah, we're not going to have that here. So this is obviously a must run as well. Then we have Kinku Lifeblade, who is lifesteal and elusive. So like, let's say you're fighting a very aggressive deck, this card can heal you up. So if you're fighting another deck that wants to play fast, you can actually use this card to stabilize, get your HP back, and then continue to pressure. Very scary. 
Next we have Kinku Wayfinder, who has been nerfed a couple times, but we are running primarily Ionia cards, so we want to run the Allegiance card. When you summon this, it gets an Allegiance bonus if the top card of your deck matches its region. Basically what it's saying is if your deck is all Ionia, this card is going to get its effect off, which is summon a one-cost ally from deck. Really good at hitting Blade Scout, really good at hitting Omenhawk, really good one-drops. Also, it's a summon two, so if you already have Green Glade Duo out, obviously really good synergy as well. Then we have two Will of Ionia to recall an opposing unit, like let's say some big seven drop unit is coming down to beat you. Well, you can just put it back in their hand for four. That's obviously really good on summon. Next we have Jeweled Protector. Grant an ally in hand 3-3. Three, three. So you play this on turn five, and then you can give one of your elusives 3-3. Three, three, try to finish the game out that way. And then also Windfarer Hatchling. When I'm summoned, give other allies 2-2 two, two this round. So it's like Keeper of Mask on steroids. Really strong card. If you're already developed, this card comes down, is elusive itself. Give your other elusives 2-2 two, two, and it's pretty much game from there and that about wraps it up for the deck rundown now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out i'll be giving context to why i'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck all right for the example game we're going to be fighting azir aurelia which is a very notorious deck that has gone down in history as one of the most unfun decks to fight you know things like that um but yeah so that's something to keep in mind is we're playing cards from about three years ago when the foundation set came out and we're going to be fighting decks that are more modern a little bit more recent cards that have come out in the past couple years so we do have to keep that in mind can the old deck still compete that's going to be a very important question so let's go ahead and pitch keeper the mask we'll play blade scout on one set up green glade duel on defense two and try to find some better turn three and onward cards we're also sitting on elixir of iron which is really nice for combat Yep, Blade Scout. Never see me coming. Sparring student, yep. Technique. We're gonna go ahead and swing. Because we're attacking with an elusive unit, they can't block. Not that they would want to, but... Yep, they could only block if they also had an elusive unit. There we go, and now he lost it for the turn. Yeah, we can go ahead and... Conspirator or Duo? Conspirator will make it to where they don't want to attack this turn. That's pretty good for us. Time for a leap of faith. Because if they attack, we can kill the Sparring Student. So they should just pass, yeah. And then we get to Green Glade Duo. Everything's better with company. Says you. And the Vori Blade Scout. My name will echo through the ages. This is a full attacking elusive board, and they can't do anything about it. I know Swinging for seven. There we go. Now we should probably set up to make our attack turn 5 a, a potential lethal, which I think we can because we can do Zed on 3, and then Conspirator, Replay, Blade Scout, and Keeper. So we're basically going to ignore what the opponent is doing here. Let's play Zed on 3, like our plan. Yep, yep. Yep. We don't really want to block with anything because we're going to try to commit to winning next turn so yeah let's just do that we need to make sure we keep everything we could do zed here and then use elixir of iron i think i'm fine with this because we have the one extra mana to play so let's go ahead and try to get a value block this is called where we're winning combat right here we get to keep our unit alive and we kill theirs that's good value so we're going to take the value trade if they use shapestone or twin that's fine. We can match that with Elixir of Iron, keeping our Zed alive. Now they have to be on another one. Which they are. That's fine. Taking a lot of damage from them. Alright. Now we can go ahead and try to get our game winning turn off. So this is going to be very explosive, elusive turn 5 combo. Check this out. So we're going to lead with Navori Conspirator. Put this back in our hand. Plus one to Green Glade Duo. Then we're going to Blade Scout, who has Elusive. No mercy for those who desecrate our home. Ah, uh, boom. Gives another plus one. And then we do Keeper the Mask for a nice little plus four bonus here. And that should be lethal. Six plus three plus three plus three. 15 damage. Didn't even need the Zed. Look at that combo.
Now we're going to slow down the game a little bit and talk about the next deck, which is Ash. Ash Noxus is a tried and true combo that has existed for a long time. It's seen multiple iterations, and yeah, it's even good in the foundation set. So you should have all these cards unlocked and able to build this deck right away. So we're going to be rocking a nice balanced curve. Look at that. Lots of one drop cards, two drop, three, four, five, even a couple six cost cards. We're going to be trying to win the game around turn six through eight. So a little bit in the mid game there. This is considered a mid range deck because of its speed and when it wants to end the game. So we're starting with Double Brittle Steel. This is really good because Frostbite is going to be our main mechanic we're playing around. If the last deck is all about Elusive, this one is all about Frostbite, using the fan favorite champions Katarina and Ash. Ash is the Frostbite champion, Katarina is just here for fun. So Frostbite as a mechanic, set a unit's power to zero this round and it can be changed after if they want to use buffs and stuff, but basically drop something to zero. That's really fun. It's really cool to do. A lot of people love this archetype. So here I am to deliver all the power of it. Brittle Steel, Elixir of Iron. We're running Elixir of Iron just like the last deck for our HP. Then we're also going to be running Omenhawk. Again, very strong Freljord card, just like the last deck. Now we have Ice Veil Archer, which is a 2 mana 3 1 that also Frostbite. Really good defensive unit. Can also be used aggressively when you have Ash leveled. And I'll explain that mechanic in a bit. Next we have Trifurian Glory Seeker is a 2-5-1. She cannot block, but she can grab things. She can challenge the opponent's units that are on the board. So things that they want to have on the board for, you know, passive effects and stuff like that. Champions out there. Well, you can grab them and force kill them, which is really good with Trifurian Glory Seeker. Especially if you combo this with Frostbiting the enemy unit. Then she lives through the combat and is really, really annoying, right? So you can control the board that way. Next we have two Averosian Trapper. When I'm summoned, create a 1 mana 5-5 five five on the top three cards of your deck. You draw this, he's really good. Just a 1 mana 5-5, five five. big body. Next we have Culling Strike. Kill a unit with three or less power. This is obviously really good, again, with Conjunction. Sending the opponent's attack to zero, just Frostbite and Culling Strike. You can pretty much kill any unit in the game that way with a little two card combo. Next we have Flash Freeze, Frostbite and Enemy. Katarina, our first champion. Katarina is mainly in here as a pressure tool. She's really good. She has quick attack. When she strikes, she goes back to the hand, and then you can play her for one more mana to get extra attacks in. When I'm summoned, rally. So you get to attack multiple times in the same turn, as long as you summon her and spend that four mana. And each time, you know, you're also getting this blade's edge. You can throw at the opponent's face or throw at their units, stuff like that to get extra value. So she's in here for that. It's also really good if you have Ash leveled because, again, I'm going to explain the mechanic in a bit, but when Ash is leveled, the opponents can't block, essentially. So if you're attacking multiple times and your opponent can't block, you can basically win the game outright. Next we have a couple Rhyme Fang Wolf. He's a 3-2-3, also a challenger, just like our Trifurian Glory Seeker. If I struck a unit with zero power, kill it. So very good synergy with dropping the opponent's power to zero. Now we have Ash. Ash on attack frots bites the strongest enemy immediately. They can't really do much about that, it just happens. And if you reduce the power of four enemies to zero, so if you frostbite four times, she levels. While leveled, enemies with zero power can't block. So there we go. That's how it can get pretty oppressive. We can use our defensive uh, tool, like freezing, for aggressive reasons. So I think that's really neat. It's super flexible, and that's one of the main reasons why people enjoy the deck. You also get a crystal arrow, which is her ulti from League, and you can use this to frostbite a bunch of enemies and then just do big swing, play Katarina, swing again, you see it gets out of control. Each time she attacks, boom, another frostbite, so yeah, it's kind of crazy. Next we have two Babbling Bjerg. When I'm summoned, draw a unit with 5 plus power. This will force draw your Ash or your Hearth Guard, right? These are the only 5 plus power things we run, so really nice to have that extra consistency of drawing your mid game power. Trifarian Assessor, when I'm summoned, draw one for each 5 plus power ally you have. So this is really good to just draw more cards, make sure you get your Frostbites, make sure you get your game-ending combos, and stuff like that. Fun fact, if she's hit by Omenhawk, she also procs off of herself. So, hey, that's pretty good. Next we have Hearthguard, when I'm summoned, grant all allies in your deck 1-1. Really strong, basically Omenhawk on steroids. Next we have two Harsh Winds, Burst Speed, just uh, Frostbite two things, really nice. Rhyme Test Shaman, Round Start Frostbite, really good. And Reckoning, this is considered a blowout card, where if you resolve this in the right conditions, you just blew out the game. The opponent has to surrender immediately because they cannot redevelop. So if you have Ash on the board or, you know, any other 5 plus power ally, you can just kill all units, including Euros, so be careful. 
All units with four or less power. If your opponent has a full board and you kill everything, well, you probably just won the game. That's why it's a blowout. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game with this deck, so you can see how the deck plays out. Hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play it. Alright, for the example game we got Viego Kindred, a really strong control deck. Uh, luckily we do have the ability to kill Kindred and Viego as long as we play our combos right. So we're going to keep our Icefell Archer Calling Strike combo, because you know, that's 5 mana, kill pretty much whatever we want, including their champions. And we're going to keep the Omen Hawk, so we'll just pitch this. Assessor is usually better to play later on when you're already out of cards and you use her to refill your hand. So let's go ahead and play Omen Hawk on 1 and then figure out what we're doing the rest of the time. There we go, get some buffs. It's always nice when Omen Hawk buffs a champion as well. Like if we just hit an Ash or something, then she'll be a 6-4. That's really nice for us, so hopefully we're lucky and there's an Ash in the top two. If not, all good. There's tons of good targets for Omen Hawk to hit. Pass. Yep. That's usually correct. Let's just go ahead and open attack, which means first action attack before the opponent can develop anything. So yeah, we'll get this open. Bonk. Quick little one damage and then pass two mana. That mana will be banked for a future turn. We can use that for spells, which is really important in this deck. We play a lot of spells. Okay, Glory Seeker. That's pretty cool. Mm, yeah, let's go ahead and play her and then just take four damage to face. Sharpen the blade, secure the kill. And then we'll float one additional mana, giving us three total, which is the most we can bank. So this is a very mana efficient turn. Three, two. Um, yeah, that's fine. Looks like we'll be taking 6 damage to face, unless I block with Omen. We can do that. I don't really mind blocking with Omen Hawk. He's already served his purpose, right? It's good to get him out of here as well, before Kindred comes down. Because when Kindred comes down, it's going to be really annoying. Bonk. So, let's go ahead and pass. Maybe they play Kindred right on 4. That would be pretty good for us. Uh, we don't have a lot we want to do. Like, we could Katarina pretty meh. I kind of want to bait the Kindred coming down. I wonder if we can. Let's pass and see what happens. We can play a bit slow. If they pass, they burn the same amount of mana as us. Okay, no Kindred. Good to know. So let's go ahead and do Ice Veil Archer. Target the 3-2. Now I can do that combo I was talking about during the deck rundown, where we swing into a unit that has zero attack because we Frostbite it, you know? Then we can use our Glory Seeker and she can live. We can also pressure their 3-2 with our 3-1, which is a good trade for us. Yep, we will take that. Glimpse. Glimpse beyond to kill this. Um, I kind of want to Culling Strike. Denying 2 card draw is so good for us here. Yeah, so now we're missing the Frostbite combo for their champion, but we are slowing down their game plan a lot by denying this Glimpse. It basically makes them have to play with what they have. Fading? Sure. Just no draw, please. Alright. That is pretty good for us. Then we can Hearthguard, Babbling Beard, all that good stuff. Back, that's fine. Hearthguard. We have a 6-2 and a 6-7, and they have a unit that cannot block. So we can just pressure 12 damage on our next open attack if we want, unless they play some stuff here. They have 5 mana to work with. It can't be Kindred, because I will frostbite her. Oh, there she is. I guess it can be Kindred. Um, let's go ahead. And before Viego comes down, I probably would like to just attack, right? How good is Viego into us? Mm, they also have this in their hand, so I feel like just attacking is apart. correct. We can threaten the Kindred, which they don't want to have happen, and commit. We don't even have to Harsh Winds. If we kill the Kindred, we're happy. Kill a unit, then revive it, so... It's gonna kill my Seeker, target the Hearthguard. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot I can do about that, actually. Okay, so we just push extra damage. An interplay shadow. Alright, I'm in a pretty strong response. 
Let's go ahead and Trapper, maybe? Trapper, Cat? Now nah, it's Beerg. Nice, we can play this too. Just have another Glory Seeker. I need just a moment. They did get that Kindred kill, which is rough. But not the worst thing in the world. Not yet, at least. When she's leveled, that's gonna get kinda crazy. Yeah, this is fine. I'll take two. This is not fine. I'm gonna Brittle Steal. Yes. And then block. Just go ahead and threaten the, the Kindred here. Straight up Vengeance. Sheesh. Okay. Top deck Vengeance. Kill that. Trapper. And Katarina is going to be our play here. Chronicler? That's fine. You already have the Kindred proc. Oh wait, I could deny the Kindred proc, can't I? Because I can Blades Edge my own unit. I think there's actually a lot of value in that. Yeah, so basically on summon, Katarina creates a Fleeting, which means it goes away at the end of the round. Blades Edge, so I'm just going to target my own unit. Denying the Kindred proc. There we go. Now she won't level. My unit was going to die anyways, and I got the Blades Edge for free. So, might as well. Alright, let's, um... Wow. Nine. Swing. Grab this. And do like this. This is pretty chill. Oh, we're actually threatening the Kindred. Um... That's Harsh Winds. There we go. Now we get to keep both of our units alive during the combat. We're gonna get the Katarina level too. Here we go. No one gets in my way. And with Cat, we could technically attack again. They do have this as a defensive option. Oh, they're just gonna play that. Um. Okay, let's play our Cat. Yeah. That's fine. We could get their other soldier, which would be pretty cool for us. Nice, we got it. And then we can attack with this. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Attacking with our other units is really bad because these are dying end of round anyways. And I don't want to put Katarina back in my hand. I don't think. Ah, maybe I should. She's safer in my hand because of their removal. All right. Yeah, this is fine then. Let's go ahead and do that. Because I can always play her again and just get the rally on their turn. Yeah. And also, Blades Edge the face. Oh. We haven't gotten a single Ash yet, which we kind of want. Yeah, these are going to die. That card's pretty useless, so that's nice. They only have one card in hand. Plus one from draw. Yeti. Hello, Yeti. Diego. Mm. Mm. I could play Rhyme Thing Wolf, which would scare them into not attacking with Diego. That would be pretty cool. Because they have to be careful of my frostbiting. Approach me and die. Or they don't seem to care. If I was on another Frostbite, like Flash Freeze, then Diego would just die and they would have to surrender. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not on the Frostbite, though. Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and do this. And then Yeti. And then Katarina. And then we can swing. Grab Viego. It's not the most pressure for us, but it's not bad either. We could also just pass. I don't really think my next attack it goes that much better for us though. Hmm. This is kind of hard. I don't want to lose my wolf for no reason. Let's just Blade's Edge face. Maybe we top deck a Frostbite. Or an Ash. Ash would be cool. Another cat. That's pretty useless, honestly. That's pretty useless. Uh, 
Uh, let's grab here. Yeah. No. Let's grab here. Like this. So we do this, then that. Alright, yeah, this makes more sense. That way Viego's not getting uh, extra attack during the combat. We'll just do this. I can actually kill the V. No, I can't. Ah. You can't Ooh. stop me! Kill the Viego, please. Don't be weird. Let me kill the Viego. Don't. Huh? Wait, we're killing the Viego. And our cat can live if we just elixir. She's gonna come back to hand. Okay. Yo, this is actually really chill. We're gonna rally a couple times and maybe just win outright. Yo, this game wasn't about Ash at all. It's all about the Katarina. Black Spear. Uh, okay, we win. Here's why, guys. This is why rally is not fair. Look at this. Katarina. Blade's Edge the 1-1. One, one. Then we attack for 4. We replay Katarina. We attack for 4 again. And that's game. Woohoo! Oh, wait. This one's stronger. Ah, let's play that one. Never play fair. And each time we play, we also get another free Blade's Edge. Isn't that crazy? GG. Yeah, rest in peace, no Ash this time. But trust me, she's good too. But man, this skin. Holy. And there we go. Game's done. Alright, to round it out, I have the slowest and most controlled foundations deck I can come up with. And that is a Yasuo deck. Now, I, I know my homies love some Yasuo. He's one of the most fan favorite champions, one of the most played. He's pretty cool in this game, even though he doesn't play exactly like you'd expect. He's actually a pretty slow and pretty control the board style champion so it's kind of interesting so let's talk about what we're doing i know the curve looks a little early in mid but it is actually a slow paced deck that wants to focus on what the opponent is doing and stopping them now that's the key we're going to be trying to stop the opponent more than anything else so we run a couple inspired inspiring mentor this is a really good card to just throw in so we have something to play on turn one you can grant an ally in hand one zero now this is really good especially in the foundation set because you're going to be fighting spiders a lot spiders have a keyword that means if you have two or less attack you can't block so you can turn a lot of your units into fearsome blockers so you can deal with spiders more easily so if you inspiring mentor your house spider or your river shaper or your shadow assassin all of a sudden you have a fearsome blocker and you also have a body to play on turn one super good super solid next we have fey blade twirler which is actually one of the win conditions of the deck very strong pressure tool comes out as early as turn two when you stun or recall a unit grant me two zero now this is really nice because we're going to be stunning and recalling quite often this thing ramps to zero every time you do it so it's going to end up being like you know like a 7-3 sometimes and that's really strong with quick attack so it's really good to attack with next we have house spider which is a really good aggressive and defensive tool summons two bodies for the price of one and it's just like yeah three three split among two bodies really good steel tempest stun an attacking enemy now this is good because i'm going to jump ahead to yasuo when you stun or recall an enemy i deal two damage to it so you can stun an enemy and then he'll do two if they have two hp just kills them outright if you stun or recall five times, he levels, and then he starts striking the unit, which means he deals his attack. So he can start killing things like that 5 HP. Really, really scary. So yeah, we're going to be trying to stun enemies while they're attacking, deal extra damage to them, just sit on the Yasuo and hold uh, control of the board. Twin Disciplines, again, really strong Ionia combat trick. Very flexible. A little bit of attack, a little bit of HP. Goes a long way. Arachnoid Sentry, which is a play stun. Obviously really good when we're trying to stun uh, Katarina recalls actually so this is really interesting taking Katarina from the ash deck putting her here because she actually has good synergy with Yasuo on strike she recalls herself that's plus one level up point for him and we can just use her as pressure here and there pretty good pretty scary next we have river shaper strike draw a spell this is really good because our spells are super important to making the deck work it's basically our engine we need half units and we need half spells so he's a unit he draws a spell just kind of makes sense Next we have Shadow Assassin, which is on Summon Draw. Really good. That way we don't run out of cards. We want to keep the cycle going with River Shaper Striking and Shadow Assassin Summoning. Love that. Next we are in Ionia, so we're going to run Deny, the strongest uh, Ionia spell. 
one of the strongest spells in the game. Next we have Will of Ionia, recall a unit. This is really interesting because if we have Yasuo on the board and we recall the unit to their hand, he can actually damage them while in hand. So if that would be enough to kill them, they die. It actually takes them out of the hand and kills them. But if they would live, then they get to stay in the hand. But that's a really interesting interaction that comes up every once in a while. And also, like I mentioned before, it's just nice if your opponent is playing a big like seven drop card or eight drop card and you just spend four to put it back in their hand. Say nah. Next, we have Yasuo. Talked about him. He's our going, uh, he's going to be our win con. We have Intimidating Roar. Now, this is a much like the card I talked about in the Ash deck, where it's a blowout card. If you resolve this, you just automatically win. Uh, five mana stun all enemies with four or less power. If Yasuo is on the board, he's going to strike each of them. If he levels, he's going to he's going to really kill them, right? So really crazy little combo. If you have Yasuo developed, Intimidating Roar, boom, there goes the opponent's board and he's leveled. They're probably going to surrender immediately. And that feels really, really cool to pull off. Next, we have two Yon. Uh, play stun two enemies. Again, 766, good body. We, we want to stun, especially if Yasu is already on the board. They actually work surprisingly well together, so that's nice. Love to see the brothers working together for a common goal. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now, here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. Hopefully, it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, for the example game, we're going to be playing against Zoe Kale. I always wondered how good Freljord Kale would be. Uh, let's go ahead and pitch. Ooh, Will of Ionia is actually kind of okay. We want to draw into it, though, not keep it in our hands. I'm kind of down to just keep our 1-2. Try to find Yasuo and also our stun cards. Okay, there's Yas. And also a buff. That's really good. Zoe. Enter. Uh, Blade Twiller is fine to hit. There's a nice little 2 minute 2-3 right away. Super cool star chart. Wow. Oh, we got Katarina. Nice. Yasuo. Kat. Alright, we're on both champs, so we're in a pretty okay spot. I'm a little scared of the Zoe getting out of control, though. They're playing some elusives. This could be elusive aggro, actually, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really big Zoe now. Um, You could stun it now. Okay, I'm down. Yeah, let's stun the Zoe to prevent extra super cool star chart value. Yeah, it's also making our blade toiler pretty scary. This is chill. Who cares about that? Okay, you want to heal? You can heal. Yeah. It's good for Kale. You don't have a reason to not do it. There we go. Cool. I'll block it with my 3 2. Not bad. Turn 4, I don't think I'm scared of too much, so I'm actually down to play, especially top deck Yasuo, show him that one. And then attack with both of our quick attack units. And we have another Yasuo Steel Tempest, we have Twin Disciplines, we have Cat. We're in an okay spot, I think, still. We just have to keep playing around what the opponent is doing. Serpent, that's fine. Swing, swing. That's it. They're probably fine with us pushing 8. I wouldn't be surprised if they just full tank it. Oh! Got the Serpent. Cool. They take 4 then. No problem. Another Blade Twirler. Yeah, that's good. I'd like to develop that. Well, we got it. Quick footwork. Fast strikes. And then what? Second Zoe. And Paddle Star for three. Yeah, I'm gonna have to twin disciplines to keep the Yas alive. Oh. That's interesting. Okay. Can't block them, they're all elusive. Battlestar? There it is. Uh, we will twin. Yeah, I think the Zoe's gonna level and be a pain, to be honest. We'll see. 
Katarina. Let the bloodshed begin. We want to make sure we attack with Katarina first. They're probably going to manifest a stun, though. Because if we can attack with Katarina first, we can get the extra Blade Twiller damage in, which is super good. Yeah, I got the stun, though. Go figure. Uh, yeah. We just have to hold the L, I think. Just have to hold the L. Swing here. Swing here. And that's it. I don't want to swing at the Blade Twirler. Just these two. Let's ping the Zoe. Okay. Ooh, Intimidating Roar is huge, actually. I'd like to do that. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, look at this combo, guys. This is what I was talking about during the deck rundown. Boom, boom, boom. Not quite leveled yet, but pretty scary. Okay. Leveled Zoe does get out of it, right? Yeah, with the pale, goes up to five. That's fine, though. We can still stun her. Or, yeah, yeah, we're still gonna stun her. <laughs> Okay, I actually don't feel like this is bad. Block here, stun this, all today. Ale's not even leveling. We'll do first action Young. Our units are huge, absolutely massive. Stun two. Okay, so, oh my god, and we're on Will of Ionia. So let's do Yone this, that. Brother, what have you become? If I told you, there we go. Would you listen? During the first stun, Yas is gonna level and then deal extra damage to Zoe because he's gonna be level. Check that out. That's the correct order. Stun the first one, level. Destiny waits. Boom, stun the second one. Boom, strike that. And then we have Will of Ionia. Put the Kale back in the hand, and then we swing for a lot because these Fae Blade Twirlers have popped off the entire game. Look at this. 14-3, 11-3. That's just way too crazy. Not nope, that's going back to the hand. Sorry. Not nope, back to the hand. If the journey doesn't get you the road, mate. And that should be game. We're gonna attack with cat first. G will recall and extra damage on the blade twirlers because that's on recall. And then yeah, we're just pushing like 40, 50 damage or something like that. Some crazy number. Alright, and that about wraps up the showcase games. Now, something I want to leave you with is always keep in mind that these are the foundation decks, right? There's always cards that have been added since then to make these decks even stronger. So if you are an Xbox Game Pass owner and you have the entire foundation set and you have a couple extra resources, you can always upgrade these decks, which is really cool. So if you like the foundation Yasuo, for example, you can add Wind Swept Hillock, which force draws you a Yasuo, adds consistency, round start stun, insane stuff, right? absolutely insane cards so you want to add that you want to add concussive palm and things like that there's upgrades for all the decks so it is important to play the foundation ones and if you like that play style you like that particular deck definitely do some research and try to find other cards that have synergy other people that have played the deck you can also stop by the stream again ask me hey what are some potential upgrades for the foundation decks i'm an xbox game pass holder and i want to see you know what more there is in legends or in terra outside of the foundation set so yeah i'd definitely be happy to help with that and that's it for this one please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining it really helps me out I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Laters!